As a Measurement Canada inspector or recognized technician employed by an authorized service provider, your job is to inspect and certify devices under the Weights and Measures Act. By properly conducting these inspections, you are protecting the integrity of Canada's trade measuring system, contributing to consumer and trader confidence across the country. Volumetric standards, like measures and provers, are high-precision instruments that play an integral part in your inspection duties. This presentation will provide an overview of the proper care and use of these important tools. It is meant as a companion to your field inspection manual, which contains the official reference documents required to complete your training. To the untrained eye, volumetric standards may simply look like steel cans. But, as a Measurement Canada inspector or recognized technician from an authorized service provider, you should be fully aware of just how essential these instruments are to your job. Despite their modest appearance, these fully traceable precision instruments serve as the basis for accuracy tests conducted all over Canada. In fact, volumetric standards are equally as important to the inspection process as the standard test procedures themselves. Volumetric standards should thus be treated with the same care you would give to a laptop, tablet, or any other vital piece of inspection equipment. Remember, these are sophisticated tools, not just cans. All standards used by Measurement Canada inspectors and recognized technicians must be designated standards. Standards are calibrated to deliver which means that when they are filled to nominal capacity, the amount of liquid that can be drained is that same nominal capacity. Once calibrated, a standard will receive a certificate of designation confirming its serial number, date of designation, and date of expiration. Failure to maintain a device's certification can result in penalties for the trader or technician responsible. The calibration and certification schedule for volumetric standards, taken from Section 56 of the Weights and Measures Regulations, states that measures must be calibrated every year, provers equipped with valves and pipe provers must be calibrated every four years, and glass graduates must be calibrated every 10 years. Measures are narrow neck standards that are filled and emptied by the top. They are generally used to test fuel dispensers, and their capacity does not normally exceed 50 liters. Through shape, reinforcing, and type of material, measures are designed to be sufficiently rigid so that they cannot be distorted during normal use. When looking from the outside, the bottoms of measures 20 liters and less are concave to prevent distortion due to the weight of the liquid. The upper edge of the necks are turned to form a lip or reinforced with a strip to prevent distortion. The most critical aspect of the care and use of a measure is the prevention of damage during use, storage and transportation. Prior to removing a measure from the district office, it must be examined to ensure that the seals are intact and that it has been certified in accordance with Section 56 of the Weights and Measures Regulations. Prior to each use, the standard should be examined for physical damage, dents, leaks, and cracked or broken sight glasses. As well, the internal coating, if applicable, must be in good condition, with no obvious peeling. If there is any sign of damage that could affect the accuracy of the measure, it should not be used until its accuracy can be confirmed. Such damage should be reported to management or your volumetric specialist. The measure should be clean and free from any substance or residue that could affect the accuracy of the standard or contaminate the product being tested in the standard. Even after having performed an initial examination of your measure, you should give the device another quick check when you arrive at the inspection site to ensure that it wasn't damaged during transit. It should be noted that the transport and handling of volumetric standards is governed by legislation, 
and that this presentation is not intended to address those aspects. Measurement Canada inspectors and recognized technicians from authorized service providers are always responsible to ensure that they respect all of the requirements surrounding the transportation and use of standards. When it has been determined that the condition of the standard is such that it can be used for the inspection, the inspection can be performed. If a measure used to certify a device is found to be non-compliant with these conditions, the inspection may have to be redone. Once a measure's condition has been deemed acceptable by a Measurement Canada inspector or recognized technician, the examination can be performed. First, place the standard on a flat, stable, level surface near the device under test. The standard must now be wet down. As discussed earlier, the standard is calibrated to deliver, and when it is filled to its nominal capacity, the amount that can be drained from the standard is the nominal capacity. Wetting the standard eliminates the loss that would occur from test liquid clinging to the dry internal surface. The wetting procedure is as follows. 1. Fill the measure to its nominal capacity with the liquid to be used to perform the inspection. 2. Empty the standard, returning the product to storage. And when the product flow turns from a continuous stream into a drip, allow it to drain for the appropriate time. The appropriate time is set out in the table, unless otherwise stated, on the Certificate of Calibration. 3. The drain procedure will have to be followed each time that the measure is drained. The tests may now be conducted as outlined in the standard test procedures. When interpreting the results, the standard must be on a flat, level, stable surface, and the neck of the measure must be plumb so that its axis is perpendicular to the surface of the liquid. Finally, ensure that you are reading results in the measure neck accurately, which is less obvious than it may seem. All standing liquid, including volumetric product in a measuring device, is curved at its surface. This curvature is called a meniscus, and it must be taken into account when reading the measure neck. To do this properly, observe the liquid at eye level, and read the lowest point of the meniscus as your result. Failure to take a reading of the meniscus at eye level can lead to parallax error, which may result in the certification of a non-compliant device. After completing the test, the standard should be drained thoroughly. Any product remaining that could leave a residue should be rinsed from the standard. The standard should then be returned to its storage area and protected from any damage that may occur. Provers are narrow neck standards equipped with drain piping and a valve. They are generally used to test meters with a capacity of 115 liters or more per minute and are most commonly constructed of mild steel or stainless steel. Through shape, reinforcing and type of material, Provers are designed so that they cannot be distorted during normal use. The shape should also ensure complete filling and emptying and prevent the entrapment of air. Provers may incorporate a sealable, adjustable displacer tube, which can displace no more than 2% of the nominal capacity. They should also be equipped with a permanently affixed drop tube that extends to the bottom of the cone. In addition, Anti-vortex baffles should be installed to prevent swirling, which could affect drain time. Some newer prover designs incorporate a visible drip point within the drain piping, which negates the requirement for a separate drain point since the product can be dripped directly into the onboard piping. Prior to use, a prover must be examined to ensure that its seals are intact and that it has been certified in accordance with Section 56 of the Weights and Measures Regulations. The prover must also be inspected for damage that may affect its accuracy, such as dents, cracked welds, a damaged sight glass, or cracked and peeling internal coating. Any such damage should be reported, and the prover should be removed from use until its accuracy can be confirmed. 
The prover should be clean and free from any substance or residue that could affect its accuracy or contaminate the product being tested. Most Measurement Canada provers are equipped with residue markers, which provide visual indication of the product last contained to help prevent unintentional product contamination. All provers are calibrated to deliver, unless marked otherwise, and it will therefore be necessary to wet down the prover prior to the inspection. Wetting the prover eliminates the loss that would occur from test liquid clinging to the dry internal surface. The wetting procedure is as follows. 1. Fill the prover to its nominal capacity with the liquid to be used to perform the inspection. 2. Empty the prover, pumping the liquid back to storage, and when the prover empties, shut off the pump, close the main valve, and open the drain. When the product flow breaks from a continuous stream into a drip, allow it to drain for the appropriate time. The appropriate time is set out in the following table, unless otherwise stated on the Certificate of Designation. For standards up to 5 litres, drip time should be 10 seconds. For standards over 5 and up to 20 litres, 20 seconds. For standards over 20 and up to 500 liters, one minute. For standards over 500 and up to 5,000 liters, two minutes. Note that this wetting process is not for use with viscous products unless special procedures are followed. A more detailed explanation can be found in the inspection procedure outlines and standard test procedures for devices manual. Once a prover's condition has been deemed acceptable by a Measurement Canada inspector or recognized technician, the examination can be performed. First, situate the prover in a location where you have visual access to the meter to be inspected, a place where the product can be returned, and electrical power to operate the pump. Next, level the prover using the leveling legs or jacks on the trailer and the level indicators mounted on the prover. Plug the electrical cord into a power supply of correct voltage using the ground fault breaker provided. Hook up the grounding cable to the loading rack grounding system and, if applicable, connect a grounding cable to the vehicle being used for the inspection. Note that the ground cable or bonding cable must always be connected if the product being used for the inspection is flammable and can generate static electrical charges. Some provers have been equipped with newer style ground loop indicating grounding reels, which provide a visual indication to the operator that a suitable ground has been established. As equipment ages, pay close attention to the condition of the grounding reels on older provers if there are any concerns with the effectiveness of the grounded connection via the onboard grounding reel. Contact your manager or volumetric specialist if you suspect the integrity of the grounding reels has been compromised or if a continuity test reveals a lack of a continuous grounding circuit. The tests may now be conducted as outlined in the standard test procedures. When interpreting the results of the test quantities delivered, the neck of the prover must be plumb so that its axis is perpendicular to the surface of the liquid. To take a correct reading, it is necessary to face the graduated plate so that the line of vision forms an angle of 90 degrees with the narrow neck. The bottom of the meniscus is the reference point to be considered. A reading should always be taken at eye level. Failure to do so can lead to parallax error, which may result in the certification of a non-compliant device. Provers are calibrated to deliver their indicated nominal capacity when the prover shell temperature is at 15 degrees Celsius. If the product in the prover differs from 15 degrees Celsius, so will the prover shell. Therefore, volume correction for the expansion or contraction of the prover shell will need to be calculated into the volume reading by the following formula and the difference applied to the prover indication. After completing the tests, the prover should be drained thoroughly. The prover should then be closed 
and all equipment used during the inspection returned and secured in its proper place. When inspecting retail motor fuel dispensers, the use of a vapor retention prover can help to significantly reduce vapor loss. A vapor retention prover is a 20-liter, 2-inch neck prover with the drain piped to a reservoir. The neck is capped and has a vapor line running to the reservoir. Product temperature is measured from a permanently mounted thermometer with the probe directly immersed in the liquid. This equipment is essentially sealed and provides an environment where the air is saturated with fuel vapor. The saturated environment is considered to significantly reduce product evaporation. An ice point bath must be performed once a month to guarantee the accuracy of certified thermometers. This procedure determines the ice point, or zero degrees Celsius, as a reference for correcting thermometer readings. To prepare an ice point bath, you will need distilled water, trays of distilled ice, a blender, a thermos, utensils, a beaker, plastic gloves. For best visual effect, our inspector is not wearing plastic gloves in this demonstration. Under normal circumstances, plastic gloves are required at all times during an ice point temperature bath. Impurities in the water can affect its temperature, which is why using distilled water is important. All equipment that comes in contact with the ice or water must be thoroughly cleaned and rinsed. Begin by emptying the ice tray into the blender. Add water until the ice is floating freely. Use the highest setting on the blender to crush the ice. If the ice slurry clings to the wall of the blender, add more water. The resulting mixture should contain only fine shavings of ice. Pour the water into the beaker. Transfer all the ice into the thermos. Ensure there aren't any large pieces left and pack the ice to remove air bubbles. Repeat the ice crushing until the thermos is full. Empty any free-flowing water from the ice bath while also ensuring that the top layer remains moist, not white. Cover the ice point bath with the opaque and thermally insulating lid. Allow the thermos 15 minutes to thermally equilibrate. Meanwhile, pre-cool the thermometer in the beaker filled with cold water. Insert the thermometer's sensor portion to a depth of at least 7 centimeters, or sufficient depth to eliminate immersion errors, below the bath surface. Do not allow the sensor to contact the bottom of the ice bath, where melt water will accumulate at a slightly warmer temperature. The bath will maintain a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius, though some factors may affect the stability. Impure water, the accumulation of melt water, and large pieces of very cold ice can produce temperature fluctuations. Steps must be taken to reduce these influences. Accurate logs must be maintained where all relevant information and all test results will be kept for the required time frame. As you can see, volumetric standards are much more than just cans, buckets, or pails. They are highly precise instruments that are critical to ensuring that measurement devices all over the country are functioning properly. The utmost caution and judgment should always be exercised in the care, use, and handling of a standard. After all, the quality of the testing is only as good as the accuracy of the standards.